John chapter 6, I want to point out just a few things. We're not going to read the whole chapter, but the whole chapter is important to understand if you're going to really get the context of what the, the statement that Jesus made and also to understand the thinking of the people that he's talking to. And so let's begin our reading in verse 1 of chapter 6. The Bible says, After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And it was also called the Sea of Gethsemane. And a great multitude followed him, because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. Isn't it amazing that the works of Jesus followed him and it attracted people and the more miracles that he did the more things that people that it would attract new people verse 3 and Jesus went up into a mountain and there sat with his disciples and the Passover a feast of the Jews was nigh and when, or when Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him he saith unto Philip when shall we buy bread that these may eat this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take it. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, There's a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. And there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down, and the number about 5,000. Now, there was a way they uh, figured numbers of people, they would count the men. So no matter how you figure this thing, no matter, no matter how, how you count it, there's at least 5,000 people on this grassy spot. There's no doubt wives and children there as well. So you, you know, if they all had, if they all had their wives with them, and they all had two children. Well, now you just figure that out, <coughs> or any kind of variation of that. What I'm saying is, that's a lot of people. Five loaves and two fishes. How's that going to feed? Now, I bring this up because it was on the heels of this miracle that Jesus gives a teaching moment. There's some Jews that needed some help. Now, we know what happened. Jesus um, prays over this, and they, um, they distribute, and they take up 12 baskets uh, of leftovers. They ended up with more than they started with. That's a miracle, amen? amen. And everybody who was there was satisfied. I believe the Bible says they ate till they were full. Amen? And thank the Lord that they all were satisfied. Now, I'm interested uh, in uh, jumping on down now in uh, verse 22. The day following, when the people which stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was none other boat there, save that one wherein two of his disciples were entered, and that Jesus went not with his disciples into the boat, but that his disciples were gone another, or gone away alone. Howbeit there came other boats from Tiberias, nigh unto the place where they did eat bread, after the Lord had given thanks. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciples, they also took shipping and came to Capernaum, seeking for Jesus. And when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when camest thou hither? Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye seek me, not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled. Now get this. Jesus knew their hearts, and the only reason he says you come looking for me is because I gave you bread. I gave you bread. You were hungry and I fed you. That's why you come back. He says in verse 27, Labor not for the meat which perished, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. 
Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that you work. That's not what it says. This is the work of God that you join the church. That's not what it says, does it? This is the work of God that you go out here and give to the poor. No, that's not what he said. This is the work of God that ye believe on him whom he hath have sent. In other words, to believe on the Lord Jesus. They said therefore unto him, What sign showest thou then that we may see and believe thee? What dost thou work? Our fathers did eat manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. So here is a situation. You have Jews that are present that day who way, 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 way back there, their, their ancestors ate the manna in those wilderness years, every day but the Sabbath day. Miraculously, God provided bread for them in the wilderness. Now, generations later, in a much different setting, amen, in the land of Canaan, they're sitting here beside the Sea of Galilee in a grassy spot, and they are fed till they're full of bread that Jesus gave them. And yet the only reason they're following Jesus is because he gave them that bread. Now these are the facts. These Jews bring up the manna. These Jews bring up that situation because they recognize the bread from heaven. Notice what Jesus says. Um, then Jesus said to him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, verse 32, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. If you're in the habit of underlining, I'd encourage you to underline that verse there. I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me that all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. The Jews then murmured at him, and because he said, I am the bread which come, came down from heaven. And they said, it, is, it, is not this the Jesus the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know, how is it then that he saith, I came down from heaven? Mm -hmm. Jesus therefore answered and said to them, Murmur not among yourselves. No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, And they shall be all taught of God. Every man therefore that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh unto me. Not that any man hath seen the Father, save he which is of God, he hath seen the Father. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath what? Everlasting life. I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. 
The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, hath eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, he, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead, he that eateth of this bread shall live forever. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Lord bless the reading of your word. Help us as we try to share just a few minutes some nuggets of truth about Jesus being the bread of life. Lord, grow us today, challenge us, encourage us in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I've entitled the message this morning, Jesus is the bread of life. Now, I made an illustration out in our Sunday school class, and I want to use the same idea as we begin this morning. You know, uh, for example, this morning we can, we can look at the chair that Miss Shirley is sitting in up front and we can say, or the fact is, that chair is green in color. Okay? Now the facts are that Shirley is sitting in a green chair. Now others in this room can say, no, that chair is not green, that chair is white. Or some might say that chair is purple. Or in Pastor Holder's case, he might say that chair is yellow. Okay? Now, irregardless of uh, what someone may think, the reality is the chair is green. The facts aren't changing. The chair is green. And you can say what you want. You can believe what you want. But the fact is the chair is green that she's sitting on. Amen? Amen? The fact is this morning that Jesus is the bread of life. And nothing is going to change that. Now folks might live their life in a different reality. They may choose to believe different things about Jesus. They might say, well, he's just a good prophet at best, like the Muslims teach. And they, they might say a whole number of other things about him. But the fact is, he is the bread of life. He is who he said he was. Now, as we look at this passage this morning, I want to share three truths from this section that we read uh, in reference to Jesus being the bread of life that I think will help us today. I want to encourage us. I want you to think this morning with the, with the brain that God gave you. Amen? First of all, I want you to notice that Jesus is the bread of life that came down from heaven. Now, we read that statement over and over and over and over again in this passage, did we not? Did not Jesus say that he was the one that came down from heaven, the bread of heaven? Is he who came down from the Father and so on? Now, here's the thing. In order for you and I to really understand and really get the impact of this truth that Jesus said he was the bread of life, you've got to put yourself into that Jew's shoes. And they had just enjoyed Jesus giving them bread on that grassy knoll beside the Sea of Galilee. They literally had to have been thinking about what it must have been like for their ancestors to be walking day by day in the wilderness and getting manna from heaven every day. And they would say that Moses gave that to them. Moses got God to provide that for them. But they kept bringing up the manna that Moses gave. But they called it the bread of heaven. Now that's on their mind. But see, like Jesus pointed out, all those that ate that bread, they died. There was no life-giving power. Now, there was life-sustaining power in that manna, but it was no life, no eternal life-giving. There's no spiritual needs going to be met with that manna. That manna was meant to be a picture that would have helped them spiritually. It was meant to be a picture of Jesus being the bread of life. 
It was meant to be a type of Christ. We understand that. But that manna itself was only life sustaining. It only helped them live another day and provide some nourishment. And it was miraculous in how it was sent. It was miraculous that every if they carried more than what they should have, it rotted if they kept it to the next day. All except on Friday. Friday they could collect a double portion so they wouldn't have to work on the Sabbath because on the Sabbath the manna didn't fall, which was Saturday. So does everybody understand that? But there's a picture here. The true bread of life that came down from heaven is Jesus. It is not the manna that Moses gave. It is not something that some man might try to come up with. The fact is that Jesus came from heaven. Now it's an interesting statement down there in verse number 42. 41, 42. The Jews had answered at him because he said, I'm the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he said, I came down from heaven? You know what they're saying. They're denying the deity of Jesus. Now you know they heard. You know they heard that Mary claimed the Holy Ghost over, overshadowed her. They knew what she said. But they said right here, well, we, is not this uh, 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 Joseph's son? Is not this Joseph? He's the father. See, they were attributing Jesus' birth to that of Joseph, not the Holy Ghost. They weren't believing. And they could not reason. They could not understand how Jesus could say he came from heaven if his father was Joseph and his mother was Mary. Now, we know the real story, and the fact is they knew it too. They just chose not to believe. Again, going back to the chair is green. Amen? And not yellow or white or purple. We find here that Jesus is that bread, that true bread, verse 32, that came from heaven. And I want you to know if you have partaken of the Lord Jesus Christ in the matter of salvation, I want you to know that you know for a fact that Jesus came from heaven. Amen? I'm so thankful that Jesus came from heaven. I, you know, heaven uh, is where the regal and royal Lamb of God resided. And for the Son of God to uh, leave heaven's glory, and, and God the Father gave heaven's best for earth's worst, come down here and died on that old rugged cross and was buried and rose again for us, I say amen to that. I, I thank God for that. But I tell you something. Uh, it, uh, salvation may be free to you and I, but it certainly isn't cheap. Because it costs the Father everything. But He is a true bread that came down from heaven. Amen. I tell you what, the Jews today, by and large, don't believe that. They don't, they don't understand that. But one day they will. Amen. One day they will. Now, not only do we see that Jesus is the bread of life that came from heaven, but number two, only Christ can satisfy spiritual hunger. You see, when they ate that bread out there in that, in that <laughs> desert, in that wilderness area, that manna from heaven, you know what? They, they got hungry again, didn't they? I mean, they could eat it, but they got hungry again. You know what that tells me? That tells me that they never got satisfied. You know what? Generations later, by the Sea of Galilee, in the land of Canaan, we find the, the Messiah providing bread, providing loaves, taking and praying over the loaves and fishes, providing bread for those Jews, 5,000 plus on that hillside that day, right by that lake there. They had a chance to eat the bread that Jesus would bless and pray over and provide for them. But you know what? Though they got filled up at that point in time, they still got hungry again. There's still another day. There's still going to be another time where they're physically going to need something to eat. Some of y'all are thinking, man, you talk about this bread and being hungry and eating something to eat. I'm hungry and I need something to eat. Well, you know what? I am too. I'm looking forward to lunch today, man. I'm not going to have a steak and baked potato. 
but I'm going to have something next to it. Amen. I'm looking forward to that. But I'll tell you this. Christ, the bread of life, is the only bread that will satisfy spiritual hunger. You know, inside of everybody that's lost, there is a desire, I think, that God puts there for them to want God. I, I believe that. I believe somewhere down in there, and it, it might be faint, but I believe God puts that desire there. Man's religious by nature. And there's that void in every lost person's life. There's an emptiness. There's a deadness there. And it's he's spiritually dead. And the old flesh and that old Adamic nature is religious. And he's trying to fill that void with all kinds of stuff. And you know what? They fill it with sex and perversion and money and, and drugs and alcohol and you know, all kinds of immorality and you name it, man. People try to, to fill that void up in their life. And all the while, all they need is the bread of life. Yep. Amen. That's all they need. But you find here that, um, that Jesus speaks of satisfying not just for life, but eternal life. I would say that eating of that bread, providing eternal life, is pretty satisfying, wouldn't you say? I mean, I've never eaten something that I, that I ate, I stayed in the strength of that for 100 days or 200 days. I mean, I'm, I can't even get through one hour without wanting something to eat. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I go home here just a little while and, 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 and feel my gut. And then I'll go lay in my recliner and I change positions. And things move around. And then there's a void again. And so what do I do? I go back to the kitchen. And I fill that void up, amen. And I get back in my recliner and I change positions, amen. And then there will be a little bit more room made. And I'll go back to the kitchen again and I'll fill that void up. And then I'll usually head to my bed. And I'll lay down there just a little while possibly. And I'll pass out. Now, you know, everybody has their own little thing. I don't do that every Sunday, but most Sundays that's what ends up happening. Uh, in my life. Now, I just know that when I eat something, I get hungry again. I mean, are y'all like that? Or are or, or y'all super people or something? I mean, you know what I mean. But here Jesus points out to them, <clears throat> i tell you how satisfying that manna was. They all died. They all died. But the one who eats of the bread I give them, What's going to happen? Eternal life. Well, what work should we do? Believe, he says. Believe on me. So here's the thing. Christ is the only one that can satisfy spiritual hunger. And when you and I, whether it be in our own life, after we're saved, we must come to Christ. Now the matter of salvation is settled, certainly, if you've been saved, so that hunger for eternal life is dealt with. But certainly that fellowship uh, and that day-by-day -day walk with God, that hunger there, uh, uh, those that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. Hey, walk with God. Amen? But if you have a family member or a friend or a neighbor or a co-worker who you perceive has a spiritual hunger, don't give them anything else but the bread of life. And His name is Jesus. Amen? Amen? If you try to substitute the bread of life with manna, they'll die. Religion will kill them, friend. <clears throat> Listen, uh, miracles will kill them. The manna was a miracle. The manna, the manna was a work of God. And you know what? If you, you, you can give people stuff like that, but if it ain't the bread of life, guess what's going to happen? They're going to die. They need the bread of life. The true bread from heaven. Last of all, and I'm done, Jesus is the bread of life and people must partake of this bread to be saved. Don't miss that. Don't miss that. I know that we just stated that He's the only one that can satisfy spiritual hunger. I understand that and you understand that. But we also must take it one step further. There is no substitute. There is no substitute for this. 
Jesus is the bread of life, and nobody is going to get saved apart from them. Nobody. They must partake. They must partake. It's amazing how when you go visit somebody, the, the, the host or hostess will say, well, listen, now, now you, you eat what you want. You don't have to eat this if you don't want. You know, and so they'll pass the, the tray around or you'll walk around the buffet or whatever and you get what you want. Now, there's modern day fast food restaurants, which there's no such thing as a fast food. It's all slow food. And uh, so fast food's a misnomer. It's slow food. And there are certain establishments here, not too far from where I'm standing, that really put the exclamation mark on slow food. I tell you, they do. But there's, there was one that had a slogan that said, have it your way. Let, let me just tell you something. You may have it your way with a cheeseburger, but you will not have it your way when it comes to getting inside of heaven's gate. Come on, there you go. Amen. Now, you might like bratwurst over a hot dog, or you might like uh, banana, uh, banana pudding over chocolate pudding, or you might even like butter pecan ice cream. <laughs> But I tell you what, you may have it your way in those things, but when it comes to salvation, there's only one way, and his name is Jesus. Amen. And he's the only bread. I said he's the only bread. I said he's the only bread. Amen. That'll truly satisfy. I've seen people try to just be good and hope for the best. I've seen people live their lives and and. They're decent folk. I'm not going to begrudge that. They have their, their mix up, but they do the best they can, they say. I hope I get in heaven. Amen. They, they, they base it on baptism and church membership and pedigree and, and everything else. But at the end of the day, if you used to ask them, what are you really depending on? They would name everything else but the bread of life. When it really comes down to it, if it was just an partaking of the bread of life alone, they just won't hold on to that. They got to add all this other stuff. You know what? That that negates it. Galatians chapter one makes that very clear. There's one gospel. There's one salvation. There's one way to heaven. Jesus made it very plain here. He talked about that in verse fifty-one about that living bread. Did he not? Mm -hmm. yeah. Which came down from heaven. If any man eat this bread, he shall what? Live forever. Either that's fact or fiction. But I go back to the fact that the chair is green. Amen? Amen? And the scripture says right here, I am the living bread, which came down from heaven. Jesus is not lying. Jesus is speaking about himself. He says, if any man eat this bread, he shall live forever. Now the Jews, <coughs> excuse me, and the bread that I'll give is my flesh, and I will give it for the life of the world. And he's trying to get them to understand. He's talking about giving himself a sacrifice. That Old Testament sacrifice. That's what's in view here. But they thought he was speaking about cannibalism. And they got hung up on all that. So they go on down, and, they, and, and, and we read the exchange already. But Jesus doesn't walk away from it. He says, for my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, he shall live by me. Do you understand this morning that anyone, or everyone I should say, everyone must partake of this bread in order to be saved? Amen. Amen. Now, we don't pray over no wafer and it turned into the literal body of Christ and by eating that, we're going to go to heaven. That is not scriptural. And we don't take it to the communion cup and drink that and pray over that and turn it into literal blood and drink that and by drinking that on a continual basis, somehow or another, we're going to uh, end up in heaven. That is not scriptural. But I'll tell you what is scriptural. Identifying with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Believing on Him as my, my Lamb of sacrifice. Putting my faith and trust in what Jesus did for me. That's what Jesus is referring to 
If I understand my Bible, that's what he's referring to right here. And just as somebody might eat a loaf of bread, when you and I put our faith and trust, because Jesus said believe right over here, did he not? They asked, what, what can we do the works of God? And he said, believe. Believe. So if I'm going to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, when I eat that, when I, when I put my faith and trust in Christ, that's as if I am eating that bread of life. And February the 16th, 1992, when I partook of that bread of life, at that moment in time, I got everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Sure did. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I, that's what I received. And you know what? I hadn't had to have any more of that since then. When I partook of the bread of life the first time, I got it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now, I tell you what I've needed since then. I've needed fellowship. Mm -hmm. I've needed closeness with Him. Mm -hmm. But that's a different issue. The bread of life is what people need. And it's our job to tell them about that. It's our job to take the bread to them. Amen? Amen. And I hope that you'll do your best this week as you go out of here to take the bread of life to folks that are hungry. Well, how do I know who's hungry? Well, you'll find out. Well, what if I run into uh, somebody and they don't want me? They don't want to talk to me. Well, somebody won't talk to you. Somebody won't listen to you. Well, I've been trying for days and weeks and months, and you know what? Just keep on. Wasn't that an iron Judson? Wasn't that who he was? Seven years? Wasn't that the gentleman? Never had a convert for seven years. The mission boards wanted to put him off the field. People wanted to give him to come back home. If it had been today, they would have took him back home. You ain't had a convert in seven years. We wasted too much money on you. You ain't called with God. Can you hear him doing that? But I'll tell you one. I think it was Justin. I can't remember which one it was. I get him mixed up with somebody else sometime. But at the end of the day, here's the deal. Here's the deal. You and I need to keep our eyes on the Lord. Amen? Amen. You and I need to take others the bread of life. Because that's what people... Blair needs the bread of life. Amen. Missouri Valley needs the bread of life. You know what I'm saying? And we need to take that to them. <coughs> now I hope this message has helped you. I hope it sured you up just a little bit. I hope it's encouraged you. Amen? Because I'm going to tell you what, when you eat that bread of life, life changes. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things passed away. Behold, all things are becoming. Amen? Every